Hi, Paul Gerard from Price Accounting Services back again for another video in this uh, investor series dealing with today, we're dealing with capital gains and losses. So when investments are sold, a CGT event occurs. In simple terms, you compare the cost versus the sale price. However, however as we saw in the video on AMIT and cost-based issues, and some other the earlier videos in this series, a cost base can be affected by several issues. So good records are really vital. Okay, so keep your CGT records. I think we covered that in the very first uh, video dealing with records. Uh, we strongly recommend taxpayers maintain a continually rolling record of all investments, dates, costs, sales, and gains. So not just the calculation of what you sold in the year continually rolling. So what info do we need for tax time? Okay, so the key information we need at tax time, each and or just total summary of the gains that are non-discounted. A summary of the gains that are discounted. And a summary of the losses. Those three things are very important. Then we also need each trust distribution statement that includes gains. So that tax statement is going to give us our gains and losses because part of the income from the trust may have been distributed as a gain or a loss. And could even be a gain or a loss on the sale of those units. And we also need to know about any exempt gains and its calculation. What did I just say? Exempt gain and its calculation? Okay, so here's where we get to the sale of a former home. Many people think that the sale of a former home means you just ignore it. That is completely and totally incorrect and a sign of a major failing if you do that in your tax returns. The decision to report a gain or a loss is mandatory. Yet, in the return there is a field set aside for exempt use. So that becomes an election. You're saying, I elect to use the CGT main residence exemption. Okay, only a simple code, pretty straightforward. However, we also commonly find general checking and advice on errors that can occur with the assumptions around a CGT gain or a loss. Just because it was your home doesn't mean it's automatically fully exempt. It might only be partially exempt. The manner in which you calculate an exemption might actually work in your favour and there might not be any tax payable. Sometimes it's, it's a simple discussion to confirm it and we do welcome that. But the important point to remember is if you do have a sale of a main residence exemption and it is fully exempt or partially exempt, we do need to report those codes in the various areas of the return. Okay. So I hope that's helped you with the information we need for CGT gains and losses. And we hope you uh, will enjoy some of the other uh, videos in this channel. And we look forward to you watching one of those again further. So until then, bye.